Hello and welcome to this presentation on ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. What I'm going to illustrate here is modeling with simultaneous coupled structural and thermal analysis. Normally ANSYS Workbench does not do direct coupled thermal structural analysis, but there is a tool available and it's free on the App Store for ANSYS. That's, if you look here, appstore.ansys.com. If you go in and you look to the ACT applications, that's A-C-T, as in ANSYS Customization Toolkit, one of the free tools in there is this Coupled Field Physics tool that can be downloaded and you can install it in a version of ANSYS and access more tools than you would have otherwise. If you read its details, you'll see that it was created to expose piezoelectric simulation thermal piezoelectric, structural thermal abilities. And what I'm going to look at here is just the structural and thermal coupling that it enables. If you go up, you can see that you're on the ANSYS App Store. And if we scroll down, here's the coupled field physics capability. When you download it, you can extract the contents of a zip file that you'll download. To learn a bit about how to use it, they have documentation in this PDF file. They also have a number of worked examples, although you don't see a simple thermal structural example in here. There are many more sophisticated examples, though, including input files for those complicated examples. I'm going to review a simple application. I've gone in and under Extensions, I've installed the extension for that ACT application. If I go back, in here there was a binaries subdirectory. In there there's a WBEX file. That's what you refer to in order to install the ACT extension. So in here you go to Extensions, Install Extension, There's the WBEX file. You go to Manage Extensions and you enable the Piezo and MEMS Act extension right here. Having done that, launch your Workbench Mechanical application. You get this extra toolbar brings more capability into your model. Now we started with a simple structural model. You'll see static structural. If you right click you can insert structural loads but many of these extra capabilities have been added by the ACT object. Here are my two bodies. Down in the environment area I've inserted structural thermal body. So this will set what happens in the chosen bodies and enable thermal degrees of freedom in addition to the existing structural ones. I went here, I went ESO and MEMS body, and I asked for structural thermal body. Got this branch. And in here I chose the two bodies that are to be given both structural and thermal capabilities. Under Connections, you'll notice I have two things. First, I have a contact. I have a contact pair set up, and it's between faces on the two bodies. Now I've done some tricky things with this contact pair. Let's have a peek face on one body and a face on the other. A pinball radius so big that it spans the gap between these two bodies, so they will act as if they're in contact. I've put a pure penalty behavior on this contact pair, and I've set the stiffness value to an extremely small number, in this case 10 to the minus 12 as that stiffness factor. What I'm interested in is thermal contact between these two. 
come to that shortly. There's no thermal input here though because it's being regulated by the fact that we're in a static structural system. However, down at the environment level, this is where we inserted the thermal structural body settings. I can also insert a thermal contact. We'll look here in that extra toolbar, define contact, I can set up a thermal contact. I put it in and I indicate which contact it's going to apply to. It's the one right here. So I chose that particular contact pair by name. They tacked on a zero at the end. It automatically is being given degrees of freedom for movements X, Y, Z, and temperature. And I put in a thermal conductance value. So I don't get to put the thermal conductance value in up here because it thinks it's a structural contact. But I put it in here, this thermal contact object, and I'm supposed to give it a physically realistic value. Other things we have on this model have a remote displacement acting back here. All the degrees of freedom set to zero. It's been set to deformable so that we can get thermal expansion. I've put in two temperature loads. Because of the ACT object, I can insert temperature loads on the model, not just thermal conditions importing from elsewhere, but I can insert temperature load down here. I put a temperature on this face. It says tabular data. If I click here, you'll see I held it at 22 degrees. I put in a second temperature load, applied it to the face over here. I click on tabular data, you can see that I ramped it up to 100 degrees. Look at the remote displacement. I set it deformable to get thermal expansion without stress. And I have another remote displacement on the other end. I'm moving it down in the Y direction, leaving all other degrees of freedom free, and also letting it be deformable so that it too can have thermal expansion without stress. What has stabilized that second body is a joint that I inserted. I put a revolute joint between the two bodies. You can see the faces on which it acts. The reference coordinate system is here. I set it to be on this face and I played with the principal axis so that the axis of rotation, which as you see here is the z-axis, would be this blue z vector. So that's the revolute joint. It'll rotate around that z value and that's why I can move this vertically. I go here and I solve and when I solve, if I look at some of the results, you can see the element types that I have. Solid 226s. They're brick elements. They carry both structural and thermal degrees of freedom among their options. There are contact pairs, enabling both the thermal contact that I inserted and as part of those remote displacements that I applied. There's also an MPC-184 element, which is part of that joint between two bodies. In my analysis settings, I asked for those loads, both the displacement and the applied temperatures, to take place to be applied across 20 substeps. I know the direct solver is going to be used. I didn't have to set this manually. And I wanted weak springs off because I am inserting a large displacement and wanted to illustrate that the position of these bodies is stable. Having solved it, 
there's my deformation. And if I animate this, you can see that the body rotates around that revolute joint. And I've asked for a temperature plot because it's a direct coupled analysis. And what's interesting is you can see the temperatures ramp up and the bodies move simultaneously. So this is one of the consequences of a direct coupled analysis. Something I want to emphasize is that when I created the contact pair, I did make that pinball big enough to span the gap even when one of the bodies moves so that the thermal contact is there and heat will always be transferred. I also set the normal stiffness factor to a very small number so that changing contact doesn't matter. I used pure penalty. I happen to have chosen a no separation contact. And we see that heat was transferred, as is evident from the temperature distribution, because I held this end, I ramped it up to 100, and I held this end at 22 degrees the whole time. So there's a quick illustration of direct coupled analysis, including the action of a joint and thermal contact between bodies. Thank you for joining me.